nearly everything that happens happens by accident of one form or another. Uh, I first entered the world of storytelling in 1979 when, as it happened, <clears throat> and then so that was very exciting. <laughs> And, and as a consequence of that, then I immediately leaped into the organization called MAPS, the National Association for the Preservation and Perpetuation of Storytelling, to their national festival that people would literally die to be invited to. And they simply put Sam Edwards, who was the person they really wanted, and me in it. They wanted Sam Edwards because he was deaf and could tell stories in sign language. And so they had to have me because I could speak. But it was GILT by association. So I became part of the NAPPS storytelling world. I really felt proud of myself, and so I was not the least bit surprised when I got a call from the moth asking me if I wanted to go down to New York and tell stories. Mindset. But, I said, I really wanted to tell this one that I had memorized. When I said the word memorized, the air turned frigid. And the young woman who was handling the moth, that was right at the beginning, the moth itself was really just a little larva. It was <laughs> its wings and flying a bit. In any event, she hung up, I hung up, and that was the end of my connection with, did I tell you why? I said the word, memorize. memorize. I, didn't, I didn't understand it was a bad word. You see, because you, you're, you're not supposed to memorize me because that means that somehow or other you're not being real. that I had kind of worked up was real, I thought. So I'll let you judge, because maybe tonight I was so excited that this will be really the first time that in a kind of a moth context I will tell this thing that I was going to do, was it 15 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> and it's real because what you're going to hear is what actually happened. I'm assuming I can remember it. <laughs> Sitting at the table, book in hand, eating chunks of tuna from a can, in a leap I saw that fish above the sea, shining wet and for a moment free, then it landed on the table on my fork. This piece of fish, this wet synecdoche. Well, what do I know of the fish that I eat? Not the habits of the species, but the fish that this piece came from. Nothing. But questions draw a picture. Where was it spawn? How did it grow? What had it seen of the sea? Was it a boy or a girl? Do they taste the same? Was it sexually mature? Did it mate? According to the books, she lays a million eggs. Was he right behind her spreading milk? Did a flip of her fin draw him nearer? Did his nudge start her laying? Did they like the way it felt? Did they mate in shallow waters off Club Med? Did they do it more than once? Was there imaging involved? Did they swim together after for a while? <laughs> Did it have a name for swimming speed among the other fish, or for leaping, if tuna noticed such? And when a sword above the sea pursuing prey, did it see a factory ship, or the tidal wrinkle caused by a drift net miles away? And where in the ocean was it taken, and by whom? The Japanese catch the most, they say, and eat it raw, juicy sushi. When that load of fish was winched up on the ship, did the tuna beat its fins to try to fly? I'm sure it lay a while on the deck, operculum a working in an effort to draw water past its gills, useless, but what else could it do? Evolve a set of lungs on the spot. Did it ride a belt down into the bowels of the ship? Did the tuna see its killer? Did the killer use a knife? I think I saw that once in an Irpy classroom film, though I'm sure his job was not described 
that way? Was it packed on the ship or sent ashore for processing? Tuna now is mostly packed in water. Is that deliberate irony? And what water? Water from where? Water from Evian? There was a conference there in World War II, high up in the Alps, on what to do with Vichy's share of Jews. A sensible decision soon ensued. Capture them for processing according to the will and plan of that most fleecy fisherman. Do I make a cruel non sequitur? Organized collection? A drift net, as it were. Shipment to a plant for processing, harvesting the useful parts, disposal of the rest. The syntactic similarity exists. But back to that chunk of tuna on my fork. How many cans of itself did my fish make? Well, I suppose it was a skipjack, the kind that loves to soar above the sea. Is that pathetic fallacy? Well, how do we know it didn't love the soar? Anyway, a skipjack weighing maybe 30 pounds, say 10 of that's inedible, though vital to its life, the fins that propel it, uh, skeleton and organs, uh, liver, heart, and kidneys, uh, intestines and the rest, in older days thrown overboard for scavengers to take, but in these days of conscious conservation canned for cats and pensioners to eat and vital to the species, the reproductive tract. The rest of it, oh, the tuna get venereal disease. The rest of it, the 20 pounds is white meat, the kind we'd like to eat to keep us thin. Divided up in six ounce portions, comes to maybe 50 cans, just about a single box. And how was that transported since the box does not have fins by tractor trailer truck that backs up to the loading dock behind the super stopping shop? There the midnight crew and a couple of remoras open up the door, regurgitates its load, quickly picked up by the stop boy and wheeled down the aisle. All the happy shallow waters off Club Med are far away. Out comes the knife again, slits the box wide open, out fall the cans quickly stacked up on the shelf. And there in a row with the others on the shelf, my skipjack for a moment is virtually together a little dip and enter before its last diaspora, and here come I to take a couple cans. I noticed by the label that this tuna's dolphin safe. That's great news for the dolphins. Oh, the shopping cart, the shopping bag, the car, the house, the pantry shelf. Then, sitting at the table, book in hand, spearing chunks of tuna from a can, I ingest it, and whatever is unused passes through the system to the sea. Do I, having eaten it, flash above that sea, shining wet and for a moment free? Well, you know what they say, you are what you eat. Well, maybe cowabungas. But as for me, I don't know. What's the PC thing to do? I've curbed my consumption of this chicken of the sea, but holy cow, a fella's gotta eat. And that's the story that I did not tell at the moth 15 years ago. Is it okay, Karen? <laughs> <laughs>